Hi, let's talk about stress part two. I have put together, I don't own the rights to this stuff. I found it um, online to help give you some of the phases of stress. I'm going to take a picture of this and I'll have it at the bottom of the video so that you can use it as a reference. But it is important to recognize, if you watched the first video, I talked about how things can layer up and, and scaffold and become overwhelming and too much, right? So in the first stage, talking about being high functioning and high functioning, <laughs> Is anybody really high functioning? We just have tips and tools and we do our best. But it means that you can be committed to tasks. You can feel satisfaction from what you're doing. You're passionate. You love what you do. And you're able to deal with those stressors because you have the tips and tools and you use them. And then the more you use them, then the more effective they become and you're, you, it slowly becomes a habit and you can not live stress-free but absolutely live comfortably with stress because it's good and bad if you watch the first video good stress can be riding a roller coaster um you know being on stage i've been in theater and going on stage you feel like the audience hears your heart beating it's so intense but it is uh, good stress and can be motivating if you get into the stage two things start to get too much and what do we often do we become delusioned. We start to go, okay, I feel like that stress. I'm just going to ignore it. I'm good. I'm good. And, and, and ignore it, right? And when we do that, then we're just kind of pushing it down. We're not dealing with it. So there's your first layer. And if that's left undealt with, then you'll start to withdraw. Withdrawing, phase three, means that you completely start to pull back. You might think, I'm just too overwhelmed. I can't um, go in and hang out with my friends and I can't um, deal with this or that. So you start to lose enthusiasm for work and play. And this is where it's, it's, a, it's a red flag. It's time to really start to identify what are these things that we've pushed down and get looking at them? It's like a backpack. If you just keep putting stuff into it. Actually, another really good way to look at it is taking a glass and saying to yourself, okay, you know what? This happened today and it stressed me out. So it starts to put some water in the glass, right? And then something else happens, and then something else happens, and then something else happens. And you're not doing anything to get rid of this. If you cried, some of it would go out, but you're not. So more comes, and more comes, and more comes, and what's going to happen? It's going to overflow. And you don't want to let that happen. So, because if you do, then you'll get to the fourth stage, which we often call anxiety and depression. But it's just complete disengagement. We're no longer paying attention to how we're feeling, what really is causing it, and what are we going to do about it. Instead, we just decide, okay, I have, to dis I have to disengage from all tasks and people, and I don't have any more patience, and I can't laugh at anything, and I'm just completely not motivated, and I don't want to do anything anymore. And this is a real dangerous stage, but most of us live here. You know what, how do we even begin to look at what is it that's filling our cup so full that it's overflowing? So I have a list here, again, I'll take a picture of it, but start to look at what are some of your anxiety triggers? What are the things that really stress you out? And I love this one because it gives you um, a scale. So you can start to look at maybe what are some of the things that you need to look at and unpack. Get some of that water out of the cup. Because if you can identify what your triggers are, then you'll be better off to look at how to help yourself work through them. It's possible to 
really look at all of the things that stress you out and decide what can you in a healthy way disengage from because there are some things that we need to not let into our world like the news how is that serving you i need to stay informed okay well there's a difference between staying informed the, and just letting anything come into your mind and your environment. So we have to protect ourselves. Okay, so some of the things that you can do to release stress is exercise. Even if you just do 10 jumping jacks, keep in mind that your motion is going to create your emotion. So even watch your body language. If you're not feeling happy and things are stressing you out and your whole body is down like this and you're holding your head up and you're and you're just so exhausted look at this body motion if even in that moment when you're feeling like that put your hands in the air just start to get motion that's going to change your physiological whether even if you fake a smile your brain doesn't know the difference. It just knows you're smiling and it's going to send happy messages to your brain and make you feel better. Light a candle. Put some incense on. Whether we realize it or not, did you know that smells, sounds, things you see, all of this can cause us a stress reaction in you, make you feel good or make you feel bad. And if you can identify what are these things that make you feel good, you can add them to your list. There's so many things we can't control and we often live in the past or the future and neither of them exist. It's only the moment that is actually real. Everything else is an illusion. So really start to take a look at um, all of the things that you can do to identify where are you at with your stress what are your triggers and then we can move on from there looking at what can i do when i feel these things and they're getting to that intense level but first we have to know what it is that makes us happy and that makes us sad let's start there emotional intelligence if you have any questions if you would like any more specific information, please leave some comments. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on YouTube. Listen to my podcast, Positively Random. And I will keep con giving you some hopefully helpful tools to reduce your stress. It is possible. It is a choice. It does take work. It's a process. But start today for a happier tomorrow because you can live your best life. You just got to figure out what that looks like. And once you know what that looks like, you can move towards it. And I promise, take baby steps and you'll get there. Much love.